Hi guys and welcome back to the next refutation and comment video where I react to a Muslim apology. Now, I know there's people out there that may still hold on to the atheist label, may still associate themselves with atheism, but they are questioning it. Uh, and there'll be people out there that, you know, recognize it's not true and they want to move on and look for the truth, but they don't know where to go. So this video is for them and I want to highlight a few steps which I believe will really help you on your journey. Okay, this is just the first sentence and this is something that I will be addressing. Now, I'm going to be you know, nice and cordial and understanding and gentle because only calling out a complete idiot stating utter bullshit, no matter how childish and condescending they may be, is far too easy. And yes, I fully understand that it's tough and quite hard to have a belief challenged that is based on a huge mountain of emotions and feelings. But he has been told he is unable to substantiate his claims and will be confronted by reality at some stage. And he's still in denial. I just came across a recording with him where I, I called into a show. And this is 2014. So it's a number of years ago and the arguments are still the same. I told him then what I'm telling him now, and he has not learned anything. Here's the thing. Naturalism is the view, roughly uh, stating, that everything in existence is the result of physical processes. No, that's not the explanation of naturalism. Everything is the result of physical processes, which are, not, which are random, which are blind, which are non-rational, which don't have a mind. That's what naturalism is asserting, basically. And is that what you believe? Okay, I don't. I can't really understand what he's saying. The problem that we have is we're talking okay. about stuff that that you guys don't understand. All right, you you talk about science, but you don't understand science. You've got okay. a guy there who says, "Yeah, but the Earth was flat, and science is unreliable and it's empirical." You guys don't okay. know what science is. Why do you discuss science? You've got Imran now discussing something about my worldview, which he doesn't understand. He's, he's talking about naturalism. He doesn't understand naturalism. So how are we going to get together here? How can we have a discussion when we're not talking okay. against each other, but with each other? All you, okay. What you are doing is you're saying, I've got it in the Quran where I've got a creator who says he's doing something, but you don't know. You're saying nothing can come from nothing. And then I'll ask you, okay, well, where does the material come from where your creator created the universe from? And suddenly you have to say, oh, Oh, that's a miracle. So as soon as I go and push you into providing something, then you, you have a cop out, oh, miracle, miracle, miracle card. You can't do that. Either, either you have a, a discussion or you're going to say, well, every time I, need, I cannot answer something, I say miracle. You can't say in the absence of God, where does everything come from? We don't know. Nobody knows. You don't know. I don't know. Let's see what this Islam apologist called Imran has to offer today, shall we? Now, his, his video is only like seven minutes long and has no particular structure. The problem is that you can open a can of worms every 15 seconds, but it takes 10 times that to bring everything back into some sort of order reflecting reality. And that's why I will be spending most of my time now talking only about this first sentence. So let's listen to this again in segments. Now, I know there's people out there that may still hold on to the atheist label, may still associate themselves with atheism. He says he knows something. He says he knows that there are people hanging on to the atheist label. <laughs> well, thank God, he's not talking about me. I hate the label and I don't identify as someone who does not do something or does not believe something or is not something. Like, I also don't identify as a criminal or a liar a philatelist, a racist, a dragon, or, or a thief. <laughs> it's a lot of things I don't identify as. I just, you know, come on, I don't have a good reason to believe gods or goddesses exist. So I don't. It's very easy and straightforward, one might think, but Imran here thinks otherwise. Because if he would accept my being an atheist, a person who does not believe gods or goddesses exist, the rest of his hatred and frustration would not fit in. So, in his mind, he blows this simple and innocuous not believing something out of all proportions, as something huge and terrible and menacing and threatening. He doesn't even understand that if theists would not propagate their dogma, 
and would not insist we believe what they believe, we non-believers would just keep quiet. There would, there would be no reason to hate anyone. But it seems that's too simple. So Imran, in his mind, builds this atheistic monster construct, snarling and growling and snapping <coughs> at peaceful victims, the Muslims. But how exactly does he know this? And you can see the air quotes, I think. Is he, is he an atheist himself? Well, I don't think so. Can you read minds? I don't think so. Is he omniscient? I don't think so. So he can't know. It's a false statement. People may still associate themselves with atheism. But the next part of the sentence also does not apply to me. As I equally hate the word atheism, since I maintain that A, we should no longer require a word for not believing gods or goddesses exist. It's the 21st century for crying out loud. And B, not one that denotes an ideology. It, you know, following a leader and dogma, because that is what an ism is. Why, why would I still be hanging on to a label, one I detest? So he thinks that I will one day love and get attached to the label, only to abandon it at some stage to join the group of deluded Muslims who believe things like talking ants and flying donkeys can be real. Really? Is that what he thinks? Well, if he does, then sorry, he's very much mistaken. Now, I've just gone over an entire page over just a few carelessly thrown out words, unthinking, false words. So even though I have explained this not believing gods and goddesses existing to him personally many times, he seems to be unable to process it. He can't accept it. And yes, addressing the next part of the statement, everyone should question their beliefs. I do, all the time. They are questioning it. Unfortunately, Imran does not. I'm willing and will change my mind if presented with compelling arguments. Imran does not. I will abandon a belief if I realize it is not true, not representing reality. Imran will not. But why not? Why is that not part of his construct? Why can't he update his knowledge base? Why can't he accept arguments that show that whatever he believes is false? Come on, this is not so difficult. If you want to know what is what and what is true, just turn to reality. You can't go wrong there. So what is this point? If now take atheism, for example, if you believe atheism is true, do you fully follow through with your atheism? Meaning, do you acknowledge the implications of atheism? Oh dear. A theist believes, an atheist does not believe. Full stop. Why is that so difficult? The, the test is checking your actions. Well, I don't believe and thus don't act. Imran, however, does believe and thus keeps slaves, has multiple wives he beats when they don't obey, has some sex slaves on the side, treats women as inferior objects, has meaningful conversations with talking ants and flies to work on a burak. No, of course not. Imran is probably a nice guy who does his best to be a good person, just as most of us human beings do. The thing is, he does this in spite of Islam in spite of believing what this cruel monster god is commanding him to do. So he is probably a good person because he's a bad Muslim and not the other way around. If you believe atheism is true, do you fully follow through with your atheism? Really? Is atheism true? Do I have the belief that atheism is true? Okay, here, yeah. this is the consequence of a badly set up premise, a statement can be true. A claim can be true. Not making a claim can't. I simply say that gods and goddesses can't exist and don't exist until someone provides me with a good reason to do otherwise. This is rational, logical, and it's a reasonable statement. Just like Imran will not simply believe dragons exist without some sort of convincing evidence, I don't believe gods and goddesses exist. So this is not something that, that is 
true? Is not believing dragons exist, is this true? It can't be. It's not a knowledge claim. It's just not believing. Instead of just going ahead and demonstrating the existence of his God, he tries to get me to doubt my own statement and somehow thinks this validates the existence of his God, somehow. Now Imran claims his God is a necessity for human existence. This is a claim, a knowledge claim. He presupposes a supernatural entity without being able to provide any evidence. So he is in a position to claim my statement that I don't believe something is not true? No, come on. I can ask whether I'm justified or whether I sufficiently researched and considered my statement, whether I can substantiate it, but not whether it is true. Now, by now, I can safely state that Imran does not understand what not believing God's goddesses exist really is. It's what I found very early on, that a theists can put themselves into the shoes and minds of theists, but not the other way around. Do you fully follow through with your atheism? Do I follow through? Seriously? Do you, Imran, believe dragons exist? No. Do you follow through with your a-dragonism? It's not, come on, it's not really a compelling or coherent question, is it? But what sounds funny this way around sounds equally funny to me when somebody asks of atheism. I, I don't really know why he can't understand that there is no action associated with not believing gods, ghosts, or that dragons exist. It's extremely liberating and relaxing for the mind and not too demanding on your body either. Because when you claim atheism, what you're saying is essentially is that everything is a result of, everything is an accident, essentially. An accident, essentially? Oh, hardly. Number one, an atheist only does one thing, not believe something. And number two, an atheist has no other opinions, not on science and not on metaphysics. A theist, the opposite of theist, who believes that a god or goddess or whatever exists. And I don't. Now, as a person, I see planet Earth not as the result of an accident, but very natural processes, following what we call the laws of physics we have detected, measured and described over the last few decades and centuries. The same applies for the existence of life and consciousness, even if we don't yet have a full working knowledge of the origin of these. But I am humble enough to admit that I am not in a position to pretend that I know something, instead of claiming certainty and sticking a god into the gaps in our combined set of available information. Imran's mind does not seem to be equipped with logical thinking capabilities, where a rejection of a proposition does not automatically result in the embrace of another one. I'm rejecting the claim that the number of mints in the box is even, and this does not mean that I'm saying it's odd. I can abstain and await a confirmation process. So, in this video so far, all we've experienced is misrepresentation, strawman and vapid claims. Yet Imran calls this a guide. One big meaningless accident. And therefore, life has no ultimate meaning. Your existence has no meaning. The world around you has no meaning. You just have emerged and you will leave. Meaning? I give meaning to my life. Why well, don't? It's up to me. The Quran and Islam in extension can't. They can provide meaningless rituals, which are then moved into a position where the rituals themselves become the meaning. Is there meaning in running around a black stone seven times? No, don't be daft. A Muslim in the 21st century does not usually keep and rape sex slaves or beat their wives, usually. So a Muslim assigns meaning to their lives the same way as I do. As this is his favorite word, I will add here, essentially. Now, there is no prohibition in the Quran as regards eating of human flesh. So why don't we, under normal circumstances, eat human flesh? Because there's an instinctive pushback. Incest is built into Islam. But we, Muslims as well as myself, will instinctively push back when addressing it, generally speaking. 
Everybody knows, well, maybe not. If you know Abraham Maslow, you will see why we do that. This is built into a human being. So we, if we're honest, don't need a Quran to tell us what the meaning of life is. The Quran, come on, it's, it's really badly written. It's, it's incomprehensible, full of inconsistencies, contradictions and mistakes. But a Muslim is drilled to immediately reject this claim without as much as a fleeting glance at the evidence supporting these claims. So Muslims need to turn to other texts out of sheer necessity. And when these fail, they need to, they must turn to scholars, humans like you and me, who tell Muslims what is wrong and what is right. But then why does anyone still need the Quran if humans take all the decisions? If you believe there is no God, there are no gods, if you acknowledge, especially in a naturalistic type of atheism, that everything is just matter in motion, and there is nothing beyond the physical material world, well then you will have to acknowledge this, that everything is one big meaningless accident. Ooh, it's going downhill. Oh. As I stated above, the atheist only states there is no belief regarding a single thing, nothing else. So an atheist does not have an opinion on naturalism. A person might, or a person does. A person who is an atheist is not automatically a naturalist, but they can be. They mostly are, but it's not, not a linkage. There, there's nothing there. Just take vegetarian. A vegetarian has only one sort of proposition or, or one attribute, and that is the dislike of red meat. Now just substitute vegetarian where you put atheist. So a person who is a vegetarian is not automatically a naturalist. That makes sense, doesn't it? So why, if you use atheist, do you need to, how can you change it? It's nonsensical. Now, an atheist, as much as this might irk him, is not part of a group following a leader and a dogma. So, come on, it is the person, the person as a whole, as an entity, multifaceted, not the atheist in the person that holds beliefs regarding naturalism. I myself have not detected any supernatural activity in my entire life, but I'm happy to accept it as soon as it's demonstrated to me, and then I will happily change my mind. So where's the problem? Imran here does not understand that naturalism merely states that natural phenomena in our natural world are due to natural processes, and that's all there is. This has nothing to do with not believing gods or goddesses exist. It's only once we discuss specific creator gods that we need to ascertain what is due to what and how to test this in the context of naturalism versus supernatural creator gods. Now Imran creates this false dichotomy of natural and meaningless on the one side and supernatural and full of meaning on the other. His mind is latched onto this and he is unable to detach himself from this line of thought. He desperately needs this God concept. Why he and people like him can't accept reality is beyond me. I just know that the feeling of freedom I experience and the sensation of being able to investigate and research without limits, without any red lines, is so wonderful and so enlightening. I was living in an Islamic environment, in a Christian environment, in a Buddhist environment, and have experienced the suppression and mind-numbing rituals being used to keep people in line. And maybe they need it. Maybe some people are better off within the restrictive harness of, I don't know, of Islam. Maybe that's why so many prison inmates accept Islam and then claim it keeps them on the straight and narrow. I just know that I don't need any gods or goddesses in my life. Thank you very much. That there is no objective essence to morality. It's just subjective ideas that are floating around out there. Oh, wow. Oh, goodness. They should really stay away from the topic of morality. Far, far away. I don't know why Muslim apologists love this topic when they fail every single time. Now, first off, I don't do good for reward. and. I don't do bad for fear of punishment. So my level of morality is much, much higher than that of a Muslim. And 
whatever good or bad actually are or might be, that is a discussion all on its own. I don't really understand why so many apologists bring up morality when it shows that their gods can't possibly exist due to the numerous contradictions and logical inconsistencies. It's hard to figure out. Has Imran ever managed to demonstrate that his favorite creator god is a benevolent and kind creator god? Well, because reading the Quran paints a very different picture, where you get a narcissistic and cruel monster demanding fear and obedience, or else. Lie down on the ground, or else. The Quran says in chapter 3 that Muslims embrace what is good and reject what is wrong. But there is no definition what either is, and where it comes from, and who defines it. So, they presuppose a good, benign deity, based on emotions and wishful thinking, nothing else. A Muslim, on the one hand, is allowed to rape married sex slaves, and on the other is encouraged to free them. So which is it? Who decides what action to take and when? Why would a god encourage slavery for hundreds and thousands of years, provide instructions, explicit instructions, on treatment and management of slaves, and then, a few years ago, suddenly decide, nah, bad idea, let's free them. How is the Muslim supposed to know what is what? Especially when you look at the role model in Islam, Muhammad, who rapes, enslaves, tortures, beheads and kills, whose income is generated as a pirate and thief, who encourages his men, well, according to dozens of narrations, graded as authentic by Islamic scholars at least, to fully enjoy raping female captives. So how can a Muslim decide? The Quran shows in a discussion between Moses and Khidr how Moses gets morality wrong and it demonstrates the heartless and brutal rationale and how this is established, what goes, and it's only when the goal is to appease, praise and brown nose the monster god of Islam. How can a Muslim accept this? These are all questions a Muslim can't answer. They can't. It's, it's impossible. As Oliver Lehman writes in his book, Islam and Morality, there is very little substance here. On page 7 he states, Islamic philosophy does not discuss morality in much depth. There are extensive discussions on metaphysics, ontology, philosophy of religion and law, of course, but a rather slim analysis of ethics. Now we usually agree that torturing a baby for pleasure is wrong and immoral. So if everyone agrees, regardless of state of mind or inclination, this is objectively good. But is masturbation, homosexuality or eating a schnitzel good or bad, moral or immoral? It is subjective since it depends on human minds. So at the end of the day, a Muslim finds their code of conduct in the same place we all do, biology and society. And this is what Abraham Maslow demonstrated and this was the conclusion of his research. Now, the third thing I would say is broaden your horizon. Ah, the irony. There's not much here, is there? Science is, as far as we, like mankind, have been able to establish, the only objective and rational tool giving us a process with which we can establish what is going on in nature. And yes, what is true, as in real, as in reality, in the natural world. As opposed to the Quran, where I have been unable to find anything, not one statement, to be verifiably correct regarding natural phenomena. Now, I can easily understand that the concept of a prime human couple as an Adam and Eve can't work. Can a Muslim broaden their horizon and accept other explanations that don't violate biological laws? Can Imran broaden his horizon and accept that as an atheist, I can happily accept intuition, instinct, guesstimates, feelings, and a lot of other ways of assessing a situation and the ensuing action based on this. If I 
estimate a tree to be 65 meters away. I'm willing to change my mind if somebody tells me it's actually 73.3 after having measured the distance, I don't know, manually using a yardstick. Now, it's an insignificant error unless you are asked to pay per square meter for a specific area. Then the mistake can be costly. But at least I can, I can estimate it. Will he accept a guesstimate if he needs a precise amount of insulin at a precise blood sugar value? I don't think so. So these are examples where you need to be precise. So if you are going to pay for something, either with money or with your life, you want to be precise. You want to know what is true and what is correct. So I don't think that he's going to be okay with just guessing it. Trizan. Today, the new atheists are pushing, pushing such as individuals like Richard Dawkins. Now, this guy is obsessed with Professor Richard Dawkins. <laughs> I am not. <laughs> he is obsessed with Wabit. I'm not. Yet, I should broaden my horizons. I accept that Professor Richard Dawkins says things which I agree with and which I think are true, are correct, verifiably correct, but not everything. The same way as there are things that Muhammad says which make a lot of sense, are correct, are, are, are nice, are good, are supportive, are all that, but not everything. Yet I should broaden my horizons. The only piece of advice I'd give you is try to be honest and sincere with yourself. Right? It's sometimes very hard to do. Again, the irony. Imran knows that the things he says, that they are wrong. Many, many people have told him. Many, many people have provided evidence why he is wrong and what is wrong. He just refuses to update his knowledge base. He lies to himself every minute he is awake and tells others to be honest and sincere. Now, Imran is a coward. He does not have the guts to talk to me. He doesn't have, you know, just to listen to anyone who is not a Muslim who can challenge his views and beliefs. He is too scared for that to happen and tells others to be honest and sincere. I really encourage you to look into Islam and what you will be surprised to find, as many people are, that do finally get around to looking into Islam and studying it objectively, is that it fits like a glove when it comes to your nature as a human being. I knew precious little about Islam when I initially got interested and went in head first, learning it properly in a structured manner from Islam clerics of different levels in an academic surrounding. And it was not objective at all. So I had to balance it myself by reading commentaries, the pros and the cons. And then I came to a conclusion about Islam, an informed, educated conclusion that Islam is the most horrible and inhumane method of indoctrination I have ever come across. Islam is full of brutal threats in this world and for eternity, with flogging, lashing, terror, force amputation, crucifixion, beheading, any kind of torture you can think of, and even a death penalty for homosexuals and apostates, people who have no direct effect on others. Have I mentioned slavery, misogyny, female and male genital mutilation? After you die, it can get a lot worse if you don't do what is expected of you, where you can't even know what is actually expected because there is no standard set of rules and so many contradictions. Whom exactly does Islam fit like a glove? And it provides answers to all of those existential questions that you have. No, it doesn't. Don't deceive others, come on. Islam only does one thing, it makes claims, nothing else. Claims galore, claims more, claims, claims, claims. And all depending on blind faith. But definitely pick up the Quran, I would say, which is what we consider to be the final revelation of God and to read it and study and see what it has to say. Yes, yes, please. Please, everybody, read the Quran. It's the quickest and most guaranteed way of making you a non-Muslim for life. You don't have long. You know, we have a certain time frame uh, which we're given to, yeah, and it's within this time frame that we have to really figure out what's going on. There you go. Why would I waste my limited time on this planet with worshipping an imaginary figure, whether it be Zeus, Allah or Cinderella? I worked out the other day that a Muslim who is like 80 years old has spent around 1,600 days on their knees praying. <laughs> Imagine what a nice life this could be 
If you were the cause of just one orgasm on each one of those days, what a beautiful, peaceful life this would be. In summary, instead of sitting down with someone like me and actually talking to a so-called atheist, Imran makes stuff up and talks about something he has no idea what it is and simply talks about what he imagines. He is so stiff, scared of atheists that he can't get himself to get into a dialogue and instead addresses his own imagination. Now, I'm prepared to change my mind when confronted with evidence that shows my beliefs were wrong. Imran is not. I am prepared to sit down and listen to what a person believes or does not believe. Imran is not. I am prepared to sit down and talk to someone to better understand their point of view and motivations. Imran is not. I don't condemn a person for their beliefs. Imran does. So it shows, well, once again, mainly three things. Number one, a person without a God belief can put themselves into the mind of a believer, but not the other way around. Being a Muslim restricts your mind, your overall thinking capability. And three, as a Muslim, and you have to accept this, the lines between truth and lie, the line between reality and fantasy, all these lines are blurred. That is why Islam in its current form is unable to survive in the 21st century and is collapsing. No amount of propaganda or wishful thinking can disguise this to a non-Muslim. And this, boys and girls, is how a short video with just a few statements requires ages to refute when applying critical thinking and rational analysis. I hope it's been informative, so give me a thumbs up if you appreciate, thumbs down if you don't, because zealots can be highly litigious. I have spread out my contents based on topics so it survives a shutdown drive using false claims regarding copyright and other fabricated threats. Some Muslims use who don't have arguments and only censorship at their disposal. So see you on one of the channels on one of the topics in another video. Cheers for now.